like to welcome to you to the uh, beginning of our class where we are actually going to paint our own flutes and uh, this is a uh, kind of new for me too and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you so I um, these are the flutes unfortunately the ones that you have or fortunately the ones you have are are whole and I made a mistake on this one so I'm missing the whole chamber and uh, to um, that is like this so but that doesn't really matter because we still can paint the this part of the flute and this will give you an idea of what to do um, your flutes are all playable um, so we'll have a little bit of a how to play those after but for now I think we're gonna we're gonna learn how to paint our flute and uh, have fun with it I'm looking so much forward to this that I'm uh, I have all my paints I have these uh, containers that's what you'll need is a container to hold your paint like a little palette and we have uh, these paints that are uh, you can get them at Walmart and they're there are these little containers, they're uh, folk art paint, and they are perfect for what we're going to do. So you gotta shake them up. And I have the three colors, and I guess I could use a black too. Um, so the three co main colors are red, yellow, and blue. With those three colors, you can make any color in the spectrum. You can make green by mixing blue and yellow. You can make orange by mixing yellow and and red. You can make uh, black by mixing all three of them together. It gives you almost like a, a darkish gray tone, almost black color. And so with those three colors, you can pretty much create any color you want. Um, so yeah, we'll start off with that. We're going to pour some of these and you don't need a lot to start off with you know because you just want to start dabbling with the colors this one I don't think I got mixed enough there we go that's more more like it and yeah I gotta make sure they mix up well squirted everywhere so yeah we have uh, any brushes you'll need you know you can use any kind of brush brush a fine brush gives you fine detail a thicker brush gives you more um, broad detail um, if you want to paint the whole thing you can get like a more of a, a wider brush if you want to paint your whole thing white and use that as your your template you could you can do that too so I'm gonna take another one of these and put white and black in there again you got to make sure it mixes properly so here we are oh there's our white nice and mix that really well and here's our black oh dear uh oh that's a little blobby you don't need much black, eh? Black, I got a lot too much there. So, we will put those away. And I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. I haven't thought of anything. I guess the cool thing is that you can do your own design and your own uh, whatever you want to put on there. You could put on like... Uh, I like stick people and stuff like that so um, I have a tendency to put do stick people and you have you need water too that's the other thing water to clean your brushes some paper towels and I have two things of water because I like to use one to rinse 
and then one to make, get her nice and clean if I'm switching colors. So, I myself am going to, I like stick people, and so I'm going to do a little stick person right at the top here. And then you can uh, do whatever you want. You, I, I kind of like the idea of doing stick figures. Um, tell the story first is my model. And then fill it in after. So I have this little stick figure. And I'm not sure what that stick figure is about. Uh, maybe my stick figure could be holding a drum up and yeah maybe that's what I'll do I like drumming you know and uh, we'll put a little drumstick to show that it's a drumstick not the chicken drumstick drumstick for playing your drum so there's my little figure there and you know, you can paint the whole thing, all co colors and stuff like that. It's up to you. There's, uh, there's no right or wrong on how you do things. And you know what? I think I need some land. So I'm going to draw with my brush a bit of land. Maybe I'll draw a circle all the way through. So yeah, there's my little land, and you know what? I think I need a sun. So I'm going to put a sun somewhere up here, and I'm actually going to take my phone video camera and show you some uh, close-ups of what I'm doing here, so it's a little easier for you to see what I'm doing and you know it could be like something that you went on vacation or you have something in the back I know there we haven't been able to go on vacation but you know something in your around your house that you and your family have done and you can uh, paint that on here tell a story and maybe you went camping in the backyard or did you have a, a fire a fire pit and you're able to do some uh, s'mores you ever had s'mores I love s'mores so I hit, let me get my camera out my phone here I'm gonna take some videos so it may seem a little weird I'm doing this at the same time so here's a little close-up of this and there's my little son and I think we get, I think we need some yellow. So here's my palette that I was showing you with the colors and the, and here's some of those main colors. There's a green in there. I thought I was going to stay away from green because I want to teach you how to use uh, to mix green, and uh, so we'll go for there. We'll go for that. Uh, okay, I'm going to use my other brush and I'm gonna it's okay to have more than one brush eh? I, I kind of like that I'm gonna use this yellow this yellow is nice and rich looking so I'm gonna use the yellow and just a yep paint in my my son just so it looks like it's getting a little and then, you know I might even come out and do something like that So the flutes that you have are Native American flutes. Um, 
They are part of our traditions, our history, Native American flutes. And so, yeah, there's my little son. You know, mine, I might even do my drum because drum has sort of a yellow tone and because of the uh, deer skin or... And you know what? I might even paint my, my body with a little bit of yellow in it. I like that color. There we go. So, having done that, I'm going to show in more close-up again. There's our yellow. There's my little guy, and there's my son. Feels like I need more, doesn't it? I feel like I... You know what? Let's put some grass in. This is a good time to make some green. Let's get make some green up. So we got the yellow, and yellow and blue mixed together. So always put your yellow first into a nice little in between the yellow and the blue and take a tiny bit of blue and just add to it because too much blue it's very little just almost like a teeny drop see how that's turning that's turning uh turning yellow or green from yellow and blue so i put a lot of yellow and then i did little bits of green and you know what? You can make that green a little darker too if you want. You can add just a little tiny bit of blue. There we are. Look at that. It's getting a little bit. So I've got some light toned um, green over here. And I, got, I can make my green just a little darker over here. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty green. So I got two greens here, eh? So you can work with the greens, different tones in there, and you can actually use work with them both. So I'm going to make some grass. And I don't know how to make grass, but I'm just going to stroke it up because I think grass kind of sticks up. Gives you a chance to have a little bit of fun with it, eh? Grass is kind of cool. Who has grass at home? You know, anybody, any of you cut the grass at home? And so, and we'll put a little bit of light tones in there too, eh? Just to give it a little bit of contrast. I have very thick grass. Like I said, there's no right or wrong on how you do it. It's about expression and how you're, you're, uh, oh, I need some grass at the back, eh? It's kind of interesting doing uh, painting on a round cylinder. Usually I'm used to painting on a flat surface, but this one's round. So there we go. And you know what? We could actually do a tree, I think. I think we need a tree. So, I'm going to go with my black again. And you know, you like I said, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I want you to do your own um, concept, your own idea, your own thoughts. And so I'm going to draw a little tree. And trees are pretty big. This one's a... Uh, and I like doing outlines. That's, that's my kind of style. And we'll just do some... Now we gotta make some branches. And you know the thing about trees, they kinda go everywhere, don't they? And we'll uh, make our tree just go off into different directions. And so it's, it's about being patient. And How you want your tree to look. <clears throat> there we go. So I'm still building my tree up. And you know, 
I want to put some some leaves on it. I'm just going to fudge it, eh? Fake it. You know, you don't have to be perfect on your tree. But uh, if you do, you don't have to draw a leaf, I guess is what I'm saying. You can actually draw things that look like that's leaves on a tree. And so we are going to do the same idea. I'm going to mix a little bit of water with this, thin it out a bit. If you thin it, you, it'll give you a little bit more uh, pencil like to. Oh. Whoa. Some really dark lines there, eh? Why not? That's my tree. Like I said, no mistakes. Okay. And we'll keep going. And I think we're getting to the top of it. My tree is all over the place. And you know, I'm just just doing my best to feather some of this stuff out. You know, I have no, yeah, so there's my tree. Let's see if I can do a close up again for you. There we go. Not a very good looking tree, but hey, we're 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 working on it. And we're gonna put some green leaves on my tree. So you know, there's the green that we made up, <clears throat> and you know you can just splotch it. That's all I'm gonna do is just splotch it on to show that yes, this is a tree. Splotching it on. Splotching to show that this is just a tree. And you know, you can cover over some of the black and show that there's splotches, there's trees, branches that we don't see. And we can get away with that. You know, the black is just to show that, you know, that's there's a tree there, a trunk, and you know, and so there's my tree. Oh, it's looking good. I like it. It's amazing how green can affect so much in a tree. I might even put a little bit of blue in there. More of a darker blue greenish tone. Just to give it some contrast. There we go. Oh, look at that. You know, I put a little bit of blue and it gives, on top of that green, it'll, uh, gives it some contrast. And contrast is uh, two colors mixing together to create uh, a tonality that's actually darker and, and lighter at the same time. Some of the artists would say chiaroscuro. Ooh, big word, eh? Chiaroscuro is light and dark. And that's how the uh, Rembrandts and the Masters painted with the chiaroscuro colors, eh? To create contrast. Oh, that tree looks pretty good. Let me show it to you. So there's my tree. Look at that, eh? There you go. So you know the limits. There's no limitations on you on what you can do. I mean, you can put a car in it. You can tell a story. You can paint way up on top of here. I mean, you can paint the whole thing. And that's the cool thing is that I want you to actually paint your flute to whatever it is you want to do. And so this is just a general guideline of what you can do, and I'm hoping that you'll have fun doing this. It was a real pleasure making these flutes for you.
I think that sounds pretty cool. I hope that comes through for you guys. And I'm uh, very grateful to have made this flute for Dimitri. I hope you like it, Dimitri. And uh, looking forward to the next one. We're on um, uh, Peggy's flute. So stay tuned for that one. We're, we're, we should have something very shortly for you. All right, take care, everyone. Have a great day.